Praise God. Amen. Folks, we're on the winning side. Somebody say amen. I said we're winners this morning. Amen. We're winning. Feels good to be a winner, doesn't it? Amen. Thank God. Oh, we might lose a little battle every now and then, but the war has already been won. Amen. We don't have to hold our head down. No, sir. We can hold our head up high. Thank God. We're on the winning side. Amen. Praise God. Look to your neighbor and tell them, I'm a winner. Hey, husband, sometimes we disappoint our wives. Look at them and tell them, you married a winner. I'm a winner. Hallelujah. Your wife married a winner. Amen. Best thing come out of Mount Vernon. Praise God. Amen. Thank God. Hope you're excited as we begin 2022. Amen. Y'all are excited, right? Some of you don't know if you're excited or not. But anyway, I'm not going to put on my glasses to see. I don't want to get discouraged before I preach. Hallelujah. Amen. But we, hey, we've made it this far. Glory to God. Amen. We're going to make it on. Amen. And if we don't make it, guess what? We're just going to swap time for eternity. Amen. We're going to swap this earth for eternal joy and glory in the presence of God. So as the man sings, I'm a winner either way. If I go or if I stay. Praise God. Amen. So I trust that you are excited today. Young folks, I know you hate to go back to school Wednesday. Amen, or whenever it is, but uh, those teachers, I'm sure, are just cannot wait to see y'all. They have been so lonesome and lonely. Amen, some of the teachers we got around here, uh, but anyway, amen. So you're going to go back and have the best semester you've ever had. Some of your seniors, it's going to be your last semester in high school, so enjoy it, make the best of it. And have a great senior year and what remains before you have to get out there in the real world. Amen. Because uh, that real world will be tough, can't it, church? Amen. There's a lot of these folks like to go back to school, be where y'all are, and just get back, let somebody else worry about the light bill and the grocery bill and the insurance and the house note and all that stuff. Amen. Y'all got it good. You just don't realize how good you have it. Amen. You, he does. Waylon does. Thank God, Hunter, Waylon, they, they realize it. Amen. They got it so good they don't want to leave. Praise God. No, no, no. I read this week where the average age in 2021 of the U.S. male, U.S. male, not the delivering kind, but the two-legged kind, the U.S. male, the average age of getting married now is 30.6 years. That's right. 30.6 years. Oh, that's right. Amen. So you can figure out what you want to about that. But anyway, more young men living at home with mom and daddy now than ever in the history of our nation. <sighs> okay. So, well, you just killed the spirit now, preacher. <laughs> well, we're going to build it back up. Let's turn to Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to read some very familiar words from the lips of our Savior this morning. Matthew chapter 6 beginning in verse 9. Jesus has been giving a discourse concerning prayer and piety and almsgiving. And in verse 9, he delivers that great prayer. And he says, after this manner... Therefore pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. I want to preach this morning for just a little while on this, the first Sunday in 2022. I want to preach to you on this thought, a very simple thought. Thy kingdom come. Amen. Thy kingdom come. 
You may say, well, Pastor, that sounds kind of like an odd topic to kick off a brand new year. We're not talking about re uh, resolutions or revelations or mistakes and ambitions for the past and the future. But I submit to you today after spiritual contemplation and meditation and seeking God that I believe that the greatest ambition and desire for the child of God in 2022 ought to be those words, Thy kingdom come. Amen. Thy king, say them with me. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom. Some of you hadn't said it yet. You hadn't found, learned since last year. Let's try it again. Thy kingdom come. Now say it again like this. Thy kingdom come in my life. Thy kingdom come in my life. Oh, God. Folks, if we can get that, you hear me. I'm telling you, it will change our perspective. It will change where we are and where we're headed. I believe that for us to be spiritually empowered in 2022, we must pray, thy kingdom come. Can you say amen? I also believe that if we are to be spiritually engaged in 2022, we must live thy kingdom come. Amen. If you pray it, you'll live it. If you don't pray it, you're not going to live it. But if you pray it, you cannot help but live it because it will ooze out of your every pore. It will dominate every facet of your life. You will have close encounters of the God kind. And God will realign our priorities. And God will realign our dimensions of life. And we will live 2022. I'm telling you, some life. Last year lived a broken, defeated existence. You hear me this morning. You don't have to live in a state of perpetual defeat. You are not a doormat for the devil. You are a child of God saved and made holy by the blood of Jesus Christ. You are a freeborn child of God set free from every sin and every hindrance. You are more than a conqueror. You've been made to sit in heavenly places is in Christ Jesus. Yes, we may fall every now and then. Yes, we may not win every battle, but we can rise up out of the ashes like the phoenix and see the glory of God return to our heart and return to our life. God didn't mean for me and you to walk around with turkeys. He meant for us to soar with the eagles, to enjoy the blessings of heaven, to live in a perpetual state of thy kingdom them come. Come on, hallelujah. Somebody said, well, preacher, we can get excited about thy kingdom come when you knew what it meant. <laughs> you ever got excited about something you didn't know what it meant? Like the little lady that told me one time after I got through preaching somewhere, and well, we had a great time. She come up to me after and she said, Preacher, I, I'm hard to hear and I didn't hear a thing you said, but from the way everybody was acting, it sure must have been good. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we sign on to things without knowing what it means. <laughs> Amen. But all I'm telling you, well, let me tell you what thy kingdom come does not mean. It does not mean praying for the rapture bus, it does not mean waiting on the imminent return of the Lord Jesus are his millennial kingdom. It does not mean that we are praying Lord let thy kingdom come and do away with these old devils and set up your kingdom in Jerusalem and the eternal kingdom of God. No, no. It has nothing to do with future revelations and prophecies and all of that stuff. It applies right here, right now folks. In this life that me and you are living, it is God's will for me and you to experience his kingdom come in our daily life. You don't have to wait till you get to heaven to experience the glory and the power of God. It is here right now. He is here right now. His glory is here. His presence is here. The Shekinah power of God is here. All we've got to do is tap into the vein and start living and walking in a kingdom mentality and walking in the realm of the spirit 
and we will experience his kingdom coming into our life. Hallelujah. So we know it doesn't pertain to something in the future, but it means everything to the present. Because I don't care how much God you had or encountered or experienced last year. The will of God for this year is more, greater, deeper. Hallelujah. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Blessings without limit. Mercy, grace, favor of God. Strength in the battle. Anointed every day. Hallelujah. Living appointed and anointed. I'm not living by the rabbit's foot. It didn't work out for the rabbit and it ain't going to work out for me and you. You know that old prayer, the rabbit's foot. They pull it out and rub it. Say, rabbit's foot, work your charm. Keep your child safe from all harm. Brother, I'm telling you, I'm not living by a rabbit's foot. I'm living by the providence of God Almighty. I'm not living by luck, chance, or happenstance. I'm not living on the short straw or coming up on the short end of the stick. I am a child of God, saved by his grace, washed in his blood. My name's written down in heaven, and I have angels camped around me. I'm anointed by the Holy Ghost of God. I'm everything that he says I am. The devil cannot, I wish somebody would say amen. The devil cannot destroy me. Hell cannot defeat me. I am a more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. I can overcome every obstacle, defeat every every enemy by his grace and power. Woo. Thank God. Lift up your head. He does move mountains. He's the mountain mover. He's the earth shaker. What is and does the phrase, thy kingdom come, actually mean? Well, let me give you a quote straight out of our Life in the Spirit Bible. How about that? This is what it says. It is the idea of God coming into the world to assert his power, his glory, and rights against Satan's kingdom. See, this world is the dominion of Satan. This world is under the limited authority of Satan. He is the prince of the powers of the air. He's the prince of the principalities and rulers of the air. He has limited dominion and authority in this world. But it said it is God coming into that world, this world, to assert his power, glory, and rights against Satan's dominion and the present course of this world. My God, what is the present course of this world? Death, destruction, confusion, heartache, and sorrow. But what did Jesus say? I've come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. Hallelujah. You don't have to go to hell with the world. You don't have to die with the world. You don't have to live in fear with the world. You don't have to, my God, hallelujah. You don't have to live in confusion with the world. God, I let you know who you are, what your destiny is, his plan for your life. There'll be clarity and not confusion. There'll be order and not disorder. God wants to invade this world and challenge the powers of hell and bring light and glory and revelation into a dark world. And he's not going to do that through bluebirds. Or whales. He said, notice this. It is more. Say more. It is more than salvation or the church. It's not us just getting saved. Thy kingdom come. What he's talking about here. He's already talking. He's talking to folks that's already born again. Me and you. Those that are already followers of Christ. So, Brother Keith, it's got to go beyond that. 
And it said it's more than the church. It's more than just saying I'm part of the bride. I'm part of the redeemed. That's well and good. But are you walking in the power and demonstration of the kingdom? See, it's one thing to be saved, but what are we doing with that salvation? It's one thing to be a part of the church, but what are we doing with that relationship? Is it bearing fruit in our life? It's not enough to just say, well, thank God, I've got my get out of hell card. Thank God I'm not going to, I'm part of the church. I'm a member of CTAG and I'm a part of, oh, no, 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 brother. What is it? It is God expressing himself powerfully in all his works. It is the working of God in every dynamic of life, in every schism of life. It is God working in you and in me through Christ who is the hope of glory. It is the fulfilling of God's will for our life in this day and hour. It is the working out of the plan of God for me and you to challenge the powers of hell. Come on. Oh, I'm telling you. Man, it's not about just being saved not about just knowing you're part of the church but it's that kingdom flowing God asserting his power his glory and his rights you know what happens when there's an earthquake it's God asserting his power as much as these lunatics think that we can outlaw lawnmowers and barbecues and we're going to save the world. That's about the stupidest thing I ever heard. You know why it gets 80 degrees one day and 29 three days later? It's God showing man you can't do nothing about it, old son. I'm in control of this thing and I don't care what you say. You cannot change the climate. You cannot undo what God is doing. Every now and then God likes to step into nature. Every now and then God likes to step into the realm of humanity and into the realm of governments and powers and do something supernatural and something that nobody saw coming just to remind us, hey, I'm still God. I created this world and I'm asserting my glory and I'm my God, that sun come up this morning. You know what he was saying? I'm asserting my glory and my power. I created it to shine. I created the earth to turn and it's turning and shining and there's not a thing man or devils can do about it. It is God coming into his glory. You might take the rooster out of the barnyard, but you can't take the crow out of the rooster. You put him in the city, put him in the country, put him in the coop, or put him on a farmstead. You know what that old boy is going to do? Cock a doodle doo. And he might start at 3 o'clock in the morning. Girls, y'all have heard of rooster crow, hadn't you? All right, I'm just checking. You know why he does that? God put it in him. Man makes laws. You can't have roosters in the community. You can't have roosters in the towns. I don't know if Sarah Land's got that law or not, but I know there's some places that do. You can have chickens, but you can't have a rooster. Why? Because I've never heard a clucking hen be able to crow like a rooster. Say amen, somebody. That rooster crows because God made him to crow. And until the last one's fried up at Kentucky Fried, they're going to keep on crowing. I wish somebody would say amen every time that rooster crows. He is asserting the dominion and the authority and the power of God every time a child of God lifts up holy hands without wrath and doubting we are bringing God's rights into this fallen world every time we say praise the Lord and thank you Jesus we are challenging the darkness and asserting God's glory into this world All things were made by him and for him and there's not anything made that wasn't made without him. 
It all belongs to him. Man has co-opted, corrupted it, and misconstrued it. But in the end, it all belongs to God. He owns the cattle of a thousand hills, the Bible said. And the old country boy said, and all the taters in them hills, he owns them too. Come on. I'm telling you. I wish I had time to tell you about nature and about the kernels of corn that sit in a row. And there'll always be an even number, not an odd. And about the stripes on a watermelon, how that God put them there and they'll never deviate from the pattern of God. And about, I believe it's morning glories, how they'll always grow up instead of down or across somebody say, man. I'm telling you who made it that way God did and every time a morning glory climbs a pole climbs a leaf hey man it's telling that world hey there is a creator you cannot get away from him as a matter of fact every time you tell somebody your name you're telling them about God you are asserting God's right if I walk up to Connor and I say Connor I am Stephen Perry guess where that comes from. It comes from God because who did God say he was? He said I am. I am the great I am. And every time you tell somebody I am David Phillips, you are asserting the creative power of God Almighty into your life and into that conversation. You can't get away from it. So it's present in the world of nature present in the world of our physiology. It's present in the creation of man. It's also present in the spiritual world. Because you see, thy kingdom come did not happen in the Old Testament. No, the kingdom came and visited upon men, but it was never in men. But in the New Testament, the dam broke. I'm telling you, and the flood has inundated this world. When did the dam break? I can tell you when it broke. Go to Luke 4.18. Jesus goes into the synagogue that morning and he takes up the scroll from the book of Isaiah and he begins to read. And he's sitting in there and this is at the beginning of his ministry. And he says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised. And he said something like this. This day, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. Hallelujah. What was he saying? I am the kingdom and I brought the kingdom to you. I am the fulfillment of Isaiah's prophecy. The dam has broke. The Niagara of heaven is flowing. I have come that you might have life and have it more. My God, that you can have it more abundantly. This day, this day, he said things are different, boys. From here on out, girls, it'll never be the same. Oh, no. You're not going to have to cut a lamb's throat. You're not going to have to sacrifice a turtle dove or a pigeon. I'm heaven sacrifice, he said. This day, and his anointing, Brother Roy, he said, is upon me. Stephen said in the book of Acts how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil. That's the kingdom come. He walked up to a widow's funeral for her son and he raised him to life and handed him to her. And he said, the kingdom has come to you. He came up to a tomb of a guy named Lazarus. And he said, come forth, Lazarus. The kingdom has come to you. Hallelujah. He came to a blind man named Bartimaeus. And he said, come here, Bartimaeus. The kingdom has come to you. This day you'll never be the same. I've come to open not only blind eyes naturally, but blind eyes spiritually. He came to the demonic 
Zodiac and said this day the kingdom of God has come to you the power and the working of the Holy Ghost brought down to a personal level when God has come down to the level of man we're not separated any longer by a veil or a holy of holies now the kingdom has come. When he said, pray, thy kingdom come. He's not talking about staying on your knees 24-7, 365. He's talking about entering to a relationship with the Father. Where that his will and his rights and his authority are asserted in your life. He said, that anointing is upon me. And I'm going to preach the gospel. And I'm going to do the works of all that he's called me to do. Hallelujah. Oh, listen to me, folks. Amen. The dam broke in Luke 4, 18. And then on the day of Pentecost, it ushered in in its fullness when 120 received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And that same day, 3,000 people had the kingdom come to them and they experienced life in their heart. Paul comes on and gives us a clarification of what the kingdom is. Hear him in Romans 14 and 7. He says, said, now the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, amen, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost on this side of Calvary, on this side of the upper room. It is me and you living in righteousness of Christ. It is me and you walking in the peace of God and in the joy of God, living a kingdom life in a fallen world, in a godless environment but still manifesting the light when all around us is darkness it's not meat and drink you're not saved because of what you don't eat or what you don't drink or what you do eat and what you do drink that don't save you that's not the kingdom folks want to keep the kingdom and laws they think well I'm in the kingdom because I don't do this and I don't do that I don't smoke, dip, cuss, chew, all of that. Well, Muslims don't either. So what makes you any different than a Muslim? They'll blow themselves up for their God. We won't even show up for our God. My God. Amen, it ain't what you do or what you don't do. It's who's living inside of you and that determines what I do or don't do. Somebody said you can't eat pork. I said, dear God, get out of my way. Porky pig better not come by me. I'm his worst nightmare. I'm not living in the Old Testament law. Jesus is a fulfillment of that law. You can eat armadillo on the half shell if you can get it down. Praise God. Amen, you can still speak in tongues while you're eating bacon and ham and possum. I wish somebody would say amen. The kingdom is spiritual. It is godly. It is not of this world. It's not in mine and your ability to produce it. We can't produce it. We can only receive it and walk in it and embrace it. Oh, church, we must pray and live, thy kingdom come. What is the fulfillment of what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6? That Paul brought clarification on this side of Calvary. Remember? The gospels contain it. The epistles explain it. And he's telling us, this is what the kingdom is. It's not standing at a wailing wall 
doing your head like this and putting a request in a wall and wearing the little thing on your head and letting your beard grow down to your feet. That's not the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is not in keeping feasts and Sabbaths and holy days. That does not make us holy. Amen. What makes us holy is nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. And the blood of Jesus Christ is the doorway into kingdom living. You can't live in this kingdom except you come by the way of Calvary and go by the way of the blood and when you go by the way of the blood guess what is yours because you're now an heir of God and a joint heir with Jesus Christ and you are heir to righteousness not ours but his amen peace peace that surpasses all understanding peace that the world cannot give and joy with joy shall men draw water from the wells of salvation. See, it's not just salvation. You remember the footnote said that, right? It's not just salvation. Amen. Listen to what, I'm, I'm so glad this fellow wrote this Bible. Man, thank God. He didn't live long enough to see it completed. Got cancer and died. But somebody finished it. But I'm so glad he started it. Donald Stamps, I believe was his name. Donald, he's a smart fella. Amen. Runs in. Maybe if I'd been named Donald, I'd have done better in school. Couldn't y'all just see me? Donald Ray. <laughs> Donald Ray Perry. Valedictorian. Salutatory. Dr. Donald Ray Perry. I'll take any help I can get. I'll change my name to Randy Ray. Hallelujah. Listen to what Mr. Stamp said about the kingdom. I didn't put this up. Amen. My finger got tired of writing if you want to know the truth. <laughs> the kingdom of God is not a matter primarily of subjects, territory, or extent. Rather, it is a matter of the king's power, authority, and rule. We do not show we are subject to the royal rule by what we eat or do not eat. Rather, the evidence that God is our king and that he truly reigns in our lives is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Woo! Say amen, somebody. Thank God. You want to impress somebody with your godliness? Manifest some righteousness. You want to let somebody know you close to God? Have some peace in a non-peaceful world. Keep peace in your family. Keep peace in your marriage. Keep peace in your friendship. Say amen, somebody. That is a sign of kingdom living. Have joy in your heart and be able to say this joy that I have. The world didn't give it in the world can't take it away. It come from God. Hallelujah. It's not limited to where I'm at. If I'm at church at home in the hospital, I still have joy. Glory. If I'm going through the worst time of my life, I can still find joy if I look hard enough. If I search deep enough, I can find God in the middle of every trial. In the is that rain? Well, I'm going to slow down. Ain't nobody going to be in a hurry to get out of here. Mess our hair up. Hallelujah. Whew. Boy, it's coming down. Some of you right now said, did I roll my window up? Too late. Ain't no need to go out there and check it. You look like a wet rat. Hallelujah. You want to impress this world? You want this world to know you part of the kingdom? You don't have to wear a 30-pound gold chain with a 50-pound gold silver cross encrusted diamonds on it. Hello? You don't have to have bumper stickers say honk if you love Jesus. Come on, somebody. You don't have to post scriptures and thoughts for the day on every kind of social media. You know what's amazing to me? A lot of folks do that and they never go to church. You'd think they're the biggest Christians you've ever seen, and as far as the pastors I can talk to, had none of them saw them in church since the Statue of Liberty was a little girl. Whew. 
Man, they are religious on that social media is what I hear. Come on, somebody. Somebody told me something the other day. He said, look what so-and-so posted. I said, dear God, I wish somebody would post the, the way to get to Calvary Temple for them. Don't try to tell me how to get to Calvary if you can't get to Calvary Temple. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. You want to impress the world? Manifest a little kingdom in you. Glory to God. Don't fuss out the waiter. Here, we got some of our young folks that work at various establishments through the town. Don't like, act like an idiot when you drive through there because you had to wait. My buddy said he's been cussed, been shouted at and hollered at. I was afraid to ask him, did he know anybody that did it? He works down there at the coffee shop. Starbucks, I think it is. Said you'd be surprised the way people act. Some folks just act a fool. Hollering, carrying on, blowing your horn. If you ain't prepared to wait, don't get in the line. Because you're going to have to wait. Hello? They short-handed. You know why they hadn't opened up inside dining? They can't get workers. And the workers they got are stressed to hear. They ought to start letting them carry pistols. One more crack out of you, Jack. And you're going to be leaking coffee. That'd create more work for the chief. We don't want that. Bless his heart. He's got enough to deal with. You want to manifest kingdom life? Show some godliness. Show some Christ-likeness. Show some humanity. Act like your mama taught you some manners. Some of y'all's mamas would be embarrassed at the way you act in public. She'd get a hold of you. She'd slap the mucus drainage out of you so fast your eyes would cross. I mean, it had a mama that do that. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. Kingdom life is kingdom life. It's not earth life. It's not flesh life. It's not human life. It's God in you reaching out to that world. It's Christ manifesting himself everywhere we go, everything we do, every word we say, every act that we commit. God is watching us and he's saying, are you advertising my kingdom? My God, let me hurry. Listen, <clears throat> you come on, get ready. My New Year's resolution is not preached quite as long as I did last year. You know, by February the 15th, most resolutions, 80% of them is, <laughs> I'm going to try to hold out longer than that. <laughs> you know what thy kingdom come would do? It'd transform us. Me, you. You, all of us, it transformed my life. Walking in the righteousness, peace, and joy of the Holy Ghost. We saw in this Bible, on this side of Calvary, on this side of the day of Pentecost, a group of people that proved to us that it is possible to live in thy kingdom come and walk in thy kingdom come. And it's the church in the book of Acts. That's right. The church in the book of Acts. It shows us as believers how to live and as the church how to progress when we pray thy kingdom come into reality. And they can't nobody pray this for you. You got to pray it yourself. You got to live it yourself. Okay? They knew how to pray. Look at Acts chapter 2 verse 41. 
Then they that received his word were baptized. That same day added unto them 3,000 souls. Verse 42, and they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, breaking of bread, and in prayers. Verse 43, fear came upon every soul. Signs and wonders were done by the apostles. That is a church flowing and walking in the power and the anointing of God and in the glory of God, experiencing the kingdom. Look at Acts chapter 5, verse 12. And by the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders wrought among the people. Verse 13. And the rest of them dared no man to join him to them, but the people magnified them. Verse 14. Believers were added unto the Lord. Multitudes. Verse 15. Amen. So much they brought the sick into the streets, laid them on beds and couches that at least the shadow of Peter passing by would overshadow some of them and they would be healed. They came out of the cities bringing sick folks vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. Everyone. My God. That is God's will. That is kingdom living. Manifesting the work of God, the will of God in our life, folks. They understood that advancing thy kingdom come was going to bring suffering, sacrifice, and even death. See, there's a price that's got to be paid to experience thy kingdom come. My question today is, are we willing, CTAG, to pay the price to experience the fullness of thy kingdom come? Stephen wanted to see thy kingdom come and it cost him his life being stoned to death. John the Baptist was beheaded because he wanted to see thy kingdom come. Others suffered horrible beatings and torture. They died in their unrelenting pursuit to experience his kingdom come in their life. It comes down to it, how bad do we want it? How desperate are we for it? We're saved today. We're in this room today because somebody pursued the kingdom. Somebody in 1955 started a group called Calvary Temple down in Plateau. And they moved from beside Long's Grocery in a tent to up by the railroad tracks right down here below Whataburger. And they continued there until they bought this piece of property. It was nothing but marsh and muck and mud, but they filled it in with bricks. And by the help of God, they made something out of nothing. And they built a church on these grounds called Calvary Temple Assembly of God. And Jim and Debbie Beck were the first couple to ever get married in that church and walked down the aisle along with her sister and her husband a double wedding, if I remember right. Why were they able to do that? Because somebody lived out thy kingdom come. Those old saints like Sister Gulledge and Sister Saxon and Sister Banks and Sister Davis and the brothers Banks and Davis and Gulledge and all of them, they cook dinner after dinner and peel 50 pounds after 50 pounds of potatoes and sold dinners to pay for the property and pay for the building. We're here on somebody else's vision of thy kingdom come. Somebody paid a price. Somebody sacrificed so that me and you could be here today and we took up the banner, hallelujah, and we've carried it to this point. But there's some folks in that nursery and in the children's church, they are saying, what are you going to prepare for us? What are you going to pass down for us? Thank God for the building. But we need the anointing, they'll say. We need the power of God. We need the demonstration of God in this hour. Are we going to give them a church that's full of life and righteousness and peace and joy? In the Holy Ghost. Because building a building doesn't make it a church. It's having Christ in his fullness that makes it a church. Stand with me.
All that we do 